Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making another double sided page in my large dilutions journal, I think. It might be my craft journal. And I'm um, using a collage page to start it off. So this is a collage paper from Natalie May Scrapbooking. I'm just using the top sheet. Oh, it is in my craft book. <laughs> and I'm just going to glue it into my page. So I decided with that beautiful hair that I actually wanted to extend that hair across the page a little bit. One of the first things I'm doing is um, painting in some gesso where I want that collage image to be. Because it's printed in colour, I want to keep those colours really intense. So I want to have some white behind it. If I just had the straight craft, um, wherever that was white would be um, sort of a dull brown colour and those colours just wouldn't be as vibrant on the page. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the sort of same. Once I've done that, now I'm going in and trying to match the colours of the collage image that I've got. And to do that I'm using watered down coloured um, acrylics. So I've just got a watercolour brush, put out a tiny bit of acrylic, lots of water and I am just um, blending them all together. But one of the things I am doing is I'm adding the color not only where the hair isn't, but I'm adding it onto the hair as well so everything sort of looks like it's seamless and it blends together. And I find that that's a really great way to make sure that everything sort of matches is whatever you do on one side, do on the other. So um, it sort of evens out and it makes it look like that's the colours used and that's what's supposed to be there. So I'm just mixing a few of my different colours. So I've got some nice, some of the purples, um, I think a bit of marine in there as well to try and match those colours. Now obviously you could use watercolours to do this. I just do not do very well with watercolours to be honest. Um, and I find I um, succeed a little bit more when I'm using my acrylic paints. So you do what works for you. One of the things I did need to do though is she obviously lost the bottom of her elbows when um, we were cutting out that piece or didn't have the elbows in it so I'm just going in and painting that in. So again I'm using up the paint I've got and I'm adding it on to other bits on the image so it looks like it's supposed to be there. And then going in with some of the distressed crayons again everywhere um, so it looks like it's supposed to be there. So I'm working on the face as well, even though I haven't painted anything in, in on the face, but I'm adding those colours so it looks like it all belongs together and it's all been done at the same time. Once I've sort of added in the shading that I wanted, I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the dress. Oops, and pulling up <laughs> some of my collage image. I'm putting some of those pencils into the hair and then I'm going around with my Stabilo or pencil just to give a little bit of depth and um, a little bit of definition to my image again. And this really helps with any image that you do to sort of pull it all together almost um, by having that little bit of depth to it. With any printed image, um, your blacks are not going to be true blacks. So having something that um, will put that black back in really helps. To do the gold circles, I'm going in with my Gilt um, Gloss Spray, can't remember the name of it, and um, putting in little dots and dashes. So obviously you can use, if you've got a chrome pen, you could use that, but um, because she's got those painted circles on here, I just want to sort of match up this uh, similar types of um, circles and so on that are in the original. Once I've done that, I'm going to dry it off. The gloss sprays take a little bit longer to dry, so just be aware of that, um, but not too much. But just don't go closing your book straight away, that's all. Then going in with some white to sort of balance it up a little bit and to make it sort of all blend together. Once I've done that, I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's good. What are you actually going to do now? So I um, didn't particularly like, while I needed that gesso in the background, I wanted to make sure that it um, sort of blended all together. While I'm trying to work out what colours and so on to do, you can sort of see me thinking, oh, what, what's next, what's next? <laughs> um, I 
continued to play with the hair and put more dots and dashes and so on on it. So, um, and also all over my iPad, which is always fun. So that was some white acrylic ink, which I find is really good for doing some splatter in the background. So it's really bugging me what to put in the background. <laughs> So I started off by painting out the rest of it with gesso, just to sort of even up a little bit. And then um, I didn't really want it being stark white, so I wanted to put a little bit of warmth into the background. So once I've dried that off, then I'm going to put in some colours. And I decided I was going to go for a little bit of green. But my green wasn't coming out very well. <laughs> Um, and again, I've really watered this down. So I didn't want it being really in your face. I wanted to see some of that white from the background. I've also gone in with a um, stencil and rubbed some of that paint away. So I sort of got a bit of a textured background. Then I'm just drying that off again and um, making sure it's set. When I was cleaning up my studio, I came across this stamp from Carabelle Studios, which unfortunately has um, since ceased making stamps, which is a, a real shame because I used to make some gorgeous ones. Um, so this is a really big one, but I just wanted to create some leaves in the background. So there's lots of different ways to create leaves, obviously, on your pages. Um, this is just one way. Uh, there's a load of stencils that you can get. I know that Natalie May, who owns, or who created that collage paper, sells her own watercolor um, stencils of frond leaves and so on. Um, Stencil Girl does the same. And there's quite a lot of stamp companies that sort of still sell um, leaf stamps. And, uh, or you can draw your own. They're not that difficult, really. So um, once you've sort of drawn them out, then I'm just going around and doodling with my white pen. So you can see because I was trying to stamp across the spine of the book that it didn't necessarily give a brilliant impression in some areas. So by being able to go back in and draw in some of those areas really helps to pop them out. Now on the um, lighter sections of the page, so where it's green, you can see that white sort of blends in, but it sort of comes into its own when you're going over the purple or over darker colours. Just helps to define what the shape is and where it is and make it look a little bit interesting. So once I've finished putting all those bits and pieces in and adding the details, I then decided I wanted to just put a little bit of colour. So I added some green um, gloss spray and sprinkled some of that over the top as well. Finally, to finish this off, I put in the quote, and I used um, stamps to do this. So one person's weeds and another of wildflowers, and I've just outlined those with a white pen. So it's a really quick and easy page to do, but the fun is trying to match up those um, collage pages and extend them and make them your own. So I hope you have a go at doing that. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye for now.